Today I want to talk about alternate suppliers and some additions we've made to that area. Alternate suppliers, of course, is in product control. F7 is your alternate suppliers. So up until now, when you generate a supplier order using our automated system, the part that you want to order would have had to be tagged with either uh, preferred supplier one or preferred supplier two, and they were the only two suppliers you could order from to generate an automated order for this product. So what we've done is we've made a change so that now you can actually order using one of these alternate suppliers. So you can automatically generate an order on any supplier you like, and that will cover the products where that supplier appears anywhere in this F7 list. Additionally to that, we've added another uh, input to F7, so in the alternate area, if you've got pack size quantity turned on, you put your unit quantity in here, and as you know, when you order one, it will order 12 automatically for you. When you receive uh, the one into stock from the supplier, it will put 12 into stock and divide the cost by 12, so everything will be right. However, we've identified that some suppliers might provide the products in packs of 12 and some products, some suppliers may provide them in packs of six. So again, we've allowed for this in the F7 area against the supplier, we've actually got uh, an individual or a separate uh, pack size quantity here. So you can put a unit quantity which actually refers to that supplier. So if I order off my uh, preferred supplier, Ace Supplies in this case, the pack size quantity will be 12. However, if I order off my other supplier, which is Acme down here on this last line, the pack size quantity will be six. That's a great new feature we've got for you. So this means when you get a list of alternate products from an alternate supplier, not a preferred supplier, you now can put those into the F7 area and when you generate an order using that alternate supply, it will pick up on those products. So I just thought I'd go through a quick scenario with you with a little bit of information how you would go about putting in a range of alternate part numbers. So first of all, uh, what I've done, this is just a bit of a scenario on how you can do it. You go to product browse, you can search for a bunch of products by supplier or by keyword. I've typed in bearing cup here. Uh, and it's listed all my bearing cups, so that's a filter. And then what I've done is I've exported them to Excel. So they're the parts that an alternate supplier is offering for me to order off them instead or to compare with the preferred supplier's products. Uh, then uh, I need to format that Excel spreadsheet that I've exported. Uh, and here's the column number. So where I've gone here is I've gone into the task menu, I've gone into the, uh, the last tab on the right and I've clicked on XLS import and I've selected alternate parts uh, from the table structure. So we're going to import into the alternate product area, that's the F7 area. And here are the headings that we've got to use. Now the important headings are sub prod, that's my primary part number, sub part, that's the supplier's part number, so that's the new alternate supplier, that's his part number, and that will make sure they cross over. Uh, you can put in the supplier code, so that's the code of the supplier, in this case it's Acme, uh, and put in the supplier's barcode if you have it, and the supplier's cost, uh, and that's all you need to import the new range or the alternate range of products into the F7 area. Then we go down here, and you see there's the uh, Excel spreadsheet that's been exported from the system. And then after I've edited it, here it is here again now. So what I've done is taken this, which is the basis of it. I've got the supplier's product, that's my part number. The supplier's part number, so all I've done here is I've added ACE in front of the part number, but I know that other alternate suppliers have other different part numbers or part numbers that are completely different to your primary part number, but that's something you're going to have to work out. You put in the supplier's code, which is actually in this case the supplier's barcode and the supplier's cost. Having the supplier's cost is important because then you can compare the order if I was to place it with this supplier or if I was able to place it with another supplier. So then I've gone in 
and I've imported it. So there's the uh, XLS import screen. I've loaded up the file and I've clicked update and now the parts are in the system. So that's where now we've got Acme in the F7 area of the primary part number. So I've simply added another supplier and I've added the products that that supplier is offering, which are alternates for my primary parts. Now that I have the parts in the supplier's alternate area of my primary parts or my preferred supplier, I can now generate an order for those products, even if I'm not using the preferred supplier. So here I've loaded up a supplier order, Acme, and I'll click F4 Generate. And I'm just going to basically pick to uh, display all products and uh, I'm going to include, um, where is it here, use preferred supply to, uh, no we're going to use the F7, there it is there, use product F7 supplier uh, and we're going to base it on uh, the, the sales for the last or the costs on the last uh, 6, 12, 18 or 24 months. This is important because some of the prices may go out of date. So you certainly don't want to compare suppliers based on one supplier's last cost being 6 or 12 months old and one being only a few months old. The prices will change of course. So uh, in this case we're going to go all available but that's another option you have now. So that's it. We're going to now generate the order and now there's all the parts that I actually put into the alternate area so you can generate it automatically based on the F7 or the alternate area. Now the nice thing here is that if I put one in all those orders, let me just step down and do that. Okay, I got my total of 202.14. So if I was to order these parts of this supplier, it would cost me $202.14. Here's a little uh, tip for you. If I change the supplier back to my primary one, it'll ask me if I want to reprice. And remember 202.14, reprice. Okay, now it's 461. So I can now determine which supplier is going to give me a better deal if I order that set of products off that particular supplier. So that's a nice tip for you. Very handy. And just don't forget that each uh, supplier now can have their own unit quantity. So there you go. There's a fair bit of information there. If you need more clarification, just go to the website and have a look in the alternate products area. That's where I'm going to put this information. So thanks for watching and talk to you again soon.